Okay, we want to simplify this complex fraction. It's a fraction within a fraction. And so the way that we do that is two different methods. One method is we try to combine the numerator into one fraction. We try to combine the denominator into one fraction. When you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal, and then you can simplify from there. The other method that we're going to do, uh, method number two, is we're going to clear the denominators by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the common denominator of all the fractions to clear those uh, denominators, and then that eliminates the complex fraction. So method number one, let's see if we can combine these fractions together so we can just have one fraction in the denominator. The first thing I would do is I would factor this x squared minus 4 into x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so I'm just rewriting it. In order to get common denominators here, this is x plus 2. It's missing an x minus 2. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by x minus 2. So now what we're left with is the numerator stayed the same. It's 3 over x minus 2. Okay, that's this group here. But the denominator we have 4x minus 8 minus 2x all divided by the common denominator x plus 2 x minus 2. Okay, so you can see now we just have a fraction divided by a fraction. But when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So you keep the numerator the same, but you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator here. So it's going to be x plus 2 x minus 2, and then this is going to be 4x minus 2x, uh, which is uh, 2x minus 8. Okay, I just simplified that numerator, but we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Now what we have is, let me just cross that out, you can see that the x minus 2's are going to cancel numerator and denominator, and we're just left with 3 times x plus 2 all over 2, I'm going to factor this, times x minus 4. And the reason I factor it is because sometimes you get some cancellation on uh, numerator and denominator, so it's good to keep it factored and see if you can reduce. So this is our final result. Now let me show you method number 2. So method number two, you would say, okay, let's look at all the denominators. We have an x minus two, here we have an, uh, we had an x plus two, right? And here we had an x plus two and x minus two. So what we would do is we'd multiply through by the common denominator. Let me start by rewriting it so we can see it a little bit clearer. So we have three over x minus two, and we have four over x plus two, and we have two x over x plus two, x minus two. But what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by x plus 2, x minus 2, to the numerator and the denominator. So anything divided by itself is 1, so when you multiply by 1, it's not going to change this fraction, it's just going to change the way that it looks. So when we distribute this here, notice how the x minus 2's cancel, so we just have 3 times x plus 2. In the denominator here, when we take this and we distribute it, this group to the first fraction, you can see the x plus 2's are going to cancel, so you're just going to have 4 times x minus 2. When you distribute this to the second fraction, what happens is that x plus 2, x minus 2 cancel, and you're just left with 2x. So if we simplify this down a little bit, we have 3 times x plus 2. Here we have 4x minus 8 minus 2x, which just gives us 2x minus 8. And then we can factor that denominator again, like we did before, and you can see we're getting the exact same end result. So either clear the denominators by multiplying through by the common denominator, or combine your fractions in the numerator to get one fraction and the denominators to get one fraction, and then multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator so that you get rid of the complex fraction. If you want to see another example, check out the video I did right there. I'll see you over in that video.